Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss. Welcome to our town. We're at Great Plains Theater and I have a whole troop of friends today. And I think we're going to talk about maybe the most exciting thing in Dickinson County in a while. Right now it is. Doug Smart. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Doug Kinsinger. Right. Doug and Doug. Doug and Doug show. Makes it easier. So you guys are traveling around the county together a little bit. Uh, I've, I've been, served on a committee for you, uh, and we're going to talk about economic development. Now, you live in a country like I live in a country, and you just told me you've only seen two of my shows. That's correct. I'm not even offended. <laughs> but if you had seen all of them, you would be hard-pressed to find a show that the words economic development or revitalization did not come out of my mouth good. because that's why we started this show is to talk about the good things in our communities what's working what's not and to inspire other people to do the same so that's why you're here today but before introduce yourself to the one person who doesn't know you Doug. all right i'm doug smart uh, my wife debbie and i own smart insurance up on northwest 15th street and we have currently 11 employees we are excited that next week we are opening a new branch office in Salina Terrific. on South Ohio. So we're in expansion mode. And uh, the most exciting thing I'm doing right now is exactly what we're talking about today. Okay, Doug Working Kinsinger, same story. I love to hear him say that. Yeah. My name is Doug Kinsinger. I'm the co-owner of a company called Opportunity Funding based here in Kansas. We uh, work with communities uh, all throughout the Midwest but have focused in Kansas trying to help them develop a strategic plan and then raise the resources to implement that plan over a five-year period. And I've, I've actually been residing in Abilene for about seven to eight months now, weekends sometimes in Topeka, where I'm from, but have really enjoyed getting to know the people and here. You're enjoying one of our trendy downtown apartments. Yes, I am. <laughs> Having a great time there. Okay, so the topic today of economic reinvestment, if you will. So this Doug and I, we, we're both businessmen in the community. We've worked here for a while. We love this community. Mm -hmm. We care passionately about its success. Uh, I think there was a group of us that have always felt like that if we could get economic development in the hands of private business, then we're more likely to steer it in a direction that will benefit private business. I don't think there's a thing wrong with saying that, is there? Absolutely not. So that's what we're trying to do, and that is to try to raise the capital that it takes to sustain a solid economic development effort. That's where Mr. Ken Singer, his company, and his expertise has came in to help us. Can I speak to that, Doug? The opportunities that are in Dickinson County are incredible. We have an interstate. We have several railroads. We have, believe it or not, a lot of money in this county that's available if you go ask for it. All we needed to do was get somebody to organize the whole thing and put it together, and that's what Doug and his company have been able to do for us. At least we're beginning that process. We're beginning that process. Your, your question about private versus governmental is an interesting one because I, I'm not gonna say that our, some of our past economic development efforts have failed. Some of the current ones are actually working very well, but not very well, but not at the level they need to or we'd right. like to see them do so. Uh, and part of that is that you've only got a limited amount of, of money. Right. Number one, you've got a, lim a limited amount of money for the people involved. Number two, for the monies you can spend marketing and doing other things like that. For me, one of the most exciting things that we're gonna be able to do when we get this plan in place is we're going to be able to hire somebody that is very highly paid because they are an extremely successful person that's very, very good at what they do. Right. Um, we recently went to the State Economic Development Association meeting, and uh, I can tell you that by the time we got done, everybody there knew where Abilene was. They knew we had an economic development program that we were putting together, and they knew that we had a job opening. They knew it paid very well, and that we were extremely organized. And make a long story short, after that meeting, we had over 20 job applications in the next week. Not all of them came from there, but mm -hmm. anyway. So people out there know what, what we've got going on and we're getting close to hiring someone for the new position. So before I put Mr. Kinsinger uh, on the spot a bit, I wanna just follow up with what you said. So Ben, I've had the pleasure of working with you and many other people on the committee side mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. One of the most inspiring things for me, Mr. Smart, 
was looking across the table at the people who came to the table in Dickinson County and were taking time from their business to mm -hmm. spend time with us to help each other grow. It's long been known that small business drives Kansas, mm -hmm. drives everywhere, frankly, mm -hmm. yep. but uh, the reality of it is we know how important it is in our county. We know how, all the things we have to offer. But this is the first time in the, since 1998 when I've been into this community that I saw the numbers of serious players sitting at a table willing to invest time, energy, and now money into an effort to help each other grow. From Harrington, from Hope, right. from Chapman, right. from Solomon, right. from Enterprise, once a month. Woodbine. Woodbine, yes. once a month, and not all the meetings have been in Ablin. We, we've met in Harrington. A couple a couple weeks ago, right. you know, and we were all down there, and and the commitment from all those communities has been fantastic. It it was fun for me to watch. You mentioned Harrington to watch the manufacturing companies walk in straight off of their manufacturing floor, sit down and talk about economic development. You have a banker walk in straight out of his mm -hmm. commercial loan department, mm -hmm. talk about this and everybody understood that it takes what you said to win. We need a lead executive that knows this job, that's highly incented to do it very well and let our assets win for us yeah, as a county. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so Mr. Kinsinger. Yes. Doug and Doug doesn't work, <laughs> so Mr. Kinsinger it is today. Uh, you've done this before in other areas uh, and I've heard you say in our committee meetings you know, the quality of the work that was put out by the people involved here mm -hmm. uh, took no second place to anybody else. And, and I think that's a message that the community needs to hear. We, our company has actually been working in Kansas for over 15 years. And in fact, we've done this similar process in Manhattan, Kansas, three times over the last 10 years. And I think most people would agree, Manhattan's had some good success. And I had <laughs> the good fortune of helping in that process and sitting in on many of their strategic planning meetings. But I also had the good fortune of being having the opportunity to work here in Dickinson County. And the quality of thought, the in-depth discussion, the give and take, uh, but the final outcome, the st strategies and the performance measures that everyone agreed to and coalesced to, and part of this whole process is kind of developing a consensus, getting the best input that we can from all leaders around the county, but we ended up probably with over 60 people involved in four different committees. One, as you know, we called our program refinement that really worked on the strategic plan, but our evaluations committee, our branding committee, and then we also have a campaign ops committee, operations committee, and all of those uh, really were the joy for me because I got to work with some of the best of the best across the county and what was in enlightening or motivational to me is how well they all worked together, respected each other, provided suggestions, and then came, coalesced to a consensus. And that's what we've been out sharing with potential investors in the community. And that's why I believe we're being as successful as we are, is they see the quality of the plan, but they also see the quality of the people involved. I would echo, I think, a solid yes to that. Uh, it was what made it easy for me to cram another meeting in <laughs> over a lunchtime or any of those other things that we've done. This is an effort that uh, we must do. And we're, we are uniquely positioned, as Mr. Smart said, uh, our county, we're uniquely positioned for success. We should take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So the, the question that people who don't know what we've been doing will ask, there will be a couple. They go, what are you going to do with the money? Right. And how are you going to know if you get one? Right. So we call that strategic plan and then measurements. And you have good answers to those, so let's answer them. So what we've developed is a program for five years, kind of an initiative that we call Driving Dickinson County. And we, one of our committees, our branding committee, helped develop that in the context or thought that it gives a little respect to our heritage of the Chisholm cattle trail, cattle trail drives, but also about driving the future, driving the direction, driving the economy. Mm -hmm. and as our strategic plan focused on, focuses on four different key strategies. 
the first one, the highest priority, being what we heard back in our feasibility study from many leaders across the community was the importance and the necessity to help retain and grow existing business. We're setting in one, there's two, Yes. here's three. Yeah, true. So it becomes self-evident, but it still needs said, right? A lot of people, I think, see that and they think, oh, gee, that's an easy, simple thing to do. We just stop by and have coffee and say, thank you for your investment and we appreciate you being here. Really, the, the profession of economic development has got a lot more in-depth and detailed that it is much more a process of really understanding that company, asking detailed questions about how they operate, what their future entails, what problems and what challenges they have, and how we can assist them. And already in, and I, I guess, I think we've done almost 80 calls with local companies, we found numerous opportunities for growth, and which excite and encourage me, and it's that potential that I think people realize, gee, this really could work. Uh, in economic development, they train you 80 to 85 percent of new jobs will normally come from within if you do your job properly. Right. If you don't, they'll walk out the back door faster than you could ever bring them in right. the front door. Well, I interrupted your presentation on uh, our strategic plan and I want to get back into it, but we're going to take a short break. I want to put an Eagle commercial in here so I can sell some <laughs> stuff, you see. That's how we do it. <laughs> but um, as we look forward to the end of the break, uh, we're going to tell them exactly how this plan is going to be implemented, how it's going to be measured, and the reason these faces are here. So if you have further questions, you can ask them anytime you see them. Absolutely. We'll be right back. Thank you. Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Boost, the cutting edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Boost certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual band modem and router, plus discrete access points to deliver wall-to-wall -wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Boost powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Boost, Wi-Fi made simple, only from Eagle Communications. Call today. Hi, Dennis Weiss, Eagle Communications, back with uh, one of my most exciting uh, things to look forward to in my job here at Eagle Communications, and that's working within the community to make the community grow. Doug Kinsinger, Doug Smart, local businessman, our new friend Thank yes. you. and consultant uh, on helping us do this task. So, Mr. Kinsinger, uh, we have outcomes that we want, that we right expect and will get yep. from this plan and we have measurements for them. Tell the folks how that works. So we focused on four different areas, one being business recruitment and or business retention and expansion, second one being new business attraction, third being branding and marketing, and fourth being uh, entrepreneurship. So our strategic planning committee really focused on what are the measurables? What, what will help us determine whether or not we're moving the needle and having success? So we agreed, we have about four measurements for each of those four initiatives. But the most important ones that we tend to communicate the most and let people know are 250 jobs over the next five year period. It is a five year plan, 18, mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So 50 jobs a year for those five years. We wanna focus on jobs that are raising the bar, or raising the standard of living, so we focused on an income level of those jobs of 33,773. A lot of people say, well, why? That's kind of a pretty specific number. Why that number? Because it's 15% above our median average or right. median income in Dickinson County, so we wanted to raise the standard of living. We didn't want to focus on minimum wage or lower wage mm -hmm. jobs. Thirdly, we also wanted to focus on companies that will make an investment in our county. So we targeted $50 million or $10 million a year uh, over the next five years. And a lot of people have said, $50 million, is that achievable? And based on our experience around the state and the potential that I see, that is achievable and it will also help expand the tax base and attract and grow companies who will bed down here who will be here for many decades, who won't leave in the middle of the night. 
And then lastly, our, because it is so important, we wanted to measure how many of those in-depth relationship forming, assistance giving interviews are conducted with existing business. So we agreed we wanted to do 30 of those per year. I ran the Topeka Chamber for many years and I had one staff person who did full time who did 100 of those a year. So mm -hmm. having that be partial responsibility of our full time director, 30 calls a year we felt was a reasonable number. Right. But those were all numbers that our committee and our investors have had input into and have bought into and feel comfortable that if we achieve those, and in fact my goal and desire is to outperform those so that five years from now we right. can be back to our investors and say, look, we gave you what you wanted plus more. Right. So. so when we went through this exercise, Mr. Smart, um, and those numbers started to be our job for today, mm -hmm. to come up with those numbers, I looked around the room and uh, this is what I do, you know. So. I looked at the people in the room and I said, okay, this is where the sales process is about to start. Mm -hmm. So, because everybody is down to it, okay, we're all business people, we know we have to measure. So how are we going to come up with that? The nervousness went up in the room when we started talking about metrics and numbers because everybody intuitively understands that's the hard part. Yeah. But what was amazing was how quickly the nervousness went away once we started putting numbers on the table and discussing them. And I remember you saying about the $10 million a year, you, somebody said, man, that seems awful big. And you go, no, 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 no. That's doable. Yeah. That additional, that's additional mm -hmm. investment mm -hmm. because all of these numbers are tied to this organization having a material impact on it. Not yes. just happening out of the blue, right. but we have to be able to track those calls, track those conversations, track that assistance, and then tie it back to a number. And I remember you saying, no, that, that's achievable. We can do that. that. That number's not too high. And more than that, I saw the confidence on your face when you said it. That was meaningful to me, and I'm sure it was meaningful to others. Well, the, the number one thing we need to talk about is the, with confidence is I know Dickinson County. Right. I know the people in Dickinson County. I know how much money there is in Dickinson County, and I knew the first thing we had to have was money to get this program going. We needed to get $2 million. I knew we could do that. I knew if we could do that, that we could get all the other things done. A lot of people didn't think we could get $2 million. I had no, no concern about that. Right. I knew we could do it because we have that much support from our, the people. And we have people in this, in this county that are not even business people anymore. They're retired that have put thousands of dollars into this program because right. they know how important it is. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Everybody, exciting. everybody's involved, okay? Yeah. That's number one. Number two, the opportunities that we have as an economic development organization, if nothing else, is to get the current businesses we have all talking back and forth. Mm -hmm. And this is what he and I have noticed the few weeks, with the few months that we've been doing this. We've, we've already got 25 or 30 new jobs started in the little bit that we've been right. working because we got company A finding out, well, company B can do that right. for me. Right. I don't have to sub that out to somebody in China anymore. I can have the guy down the street make that product yeah. for me. That's pretty exciting stuff. And I'm not an economic development guy. Well, and you I'm, are too. And you, just told, <laughs> you told us right off the bat you're just putting a new office in Salina. Okay. That's economic All right. development All right. at the core, man. The other, the other exciting thing is that, that and, and, and Mr. Kinsinger needs to take most of the responsibility for this, but we've already talked to people in the last month that if, if what they're telling us happens, which they want to do happens, within the next two years, with one small project that they're working on, there will be up to $7 million of new buildings of new, and, and up to 200 new jobs. That's just with one, with one business. And, and there's, we've got four or five of those things working already. So, okay. I've got a couple of things I, I want to say, and you can either confirm or deny, but just so you know, if you decide to, den to deny, we'll turn your microphone off. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to lean over and talk into him. <laughs> just kidding, of course. So. You know, as you look at this process, and I don't know how you do it, but I imagine objections, and I think, mm -hmm, what mm -hmm, would the objections mm -hmm. be? And I answer them to myself. And then, it's, so you're always prepared when somebody asks you that question. 
So you take that one. Uh, so what material thing did you do to find this information that we can claim credit for? Two things. One, you went and asked. Mm -hmm. You sat down and talked to somebody. Mm -hmm. That is a key component in economic development, and it's why you need the right person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that person has to be able to elicit response, has to be able to have the conversation, has to be able to generate ideas, and both of you do that real well. So that was one. But two, we're humans. Cheerleading, saying thank you, appreciation, or good job is essential to further cooperation. You cannot expect further cooperation unless you show appreciation for what has already been done. That too is key to economic investment. Absolutely. So the simple act of you going to seek money, capital for this, gives people confidence that their plans they've been setting on are doable. Mm -hmm. As the community moves along, that gives business A and business B and business C more confidence to move forward. Absolutely. Same that, that's how it really works. It's the way it is. That's why this plant's going to work. Uh, so far, one of the things we haven't emphasized much is to implement this plan over the, the next five-year period. Doug referenced our goal ended up being a million dollars in capital. And to the, the gracious support of so many from across the county, uh, we're actually at 957,000 as of mid-November towards that goal. And that's how many months of? Uh, actually, a little over three months. Yeah, that's uh, pretty amazing. It is. Thank you, Dickinson County. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. And that's been the encouraging thing to me is to see how people have have dug deep to support this, and we we always try to kindly say we we don't. Uh, break arms, we only gently twist them. Mm -hmm. and, but they've been very gracious and invested at a level that they were comfortable with and have enabled us to, to be at that level at this point and we're highly optimistic that we'll meet and exceed our goal before the end of the year. But the key is that we need to get leaders together to work to implement this plan, have a qualified staff and a professional experienced staff who can be the leadership to implement it on a day-by-day -day basis, and then a board and, and informed investors. We've actually also formed an investors advisory council that'll be made up of a variety of our investors from across the county who will be able to help monitor and give input and be involved, but hold accountable the staff and the board towards the plan. So Dave gave me the two-minute warning. That means the time is just gone like that. So. Uh, I want to put a stake in the sand here, uh, I guess, for myself and for uh, what I represent at Eagle and, and this process. I think it just speaks to the benefits that we do enjoy here in Dickinson County. This is a great place to live and work. It just is. And it kids. has been <laughs> for a long, long time. But we're at the place where it's time to remind people. So we're reminding them by going and showing these people what we're going to do and getting them to engage with us, but we're also reminding everybody out there. And as this video hits the internet and people share it on Facebook, people will see that Dickinson County is doing these things and we need that done. So every time you watch this, share it with somebody, put it on Facebook and let it go. Because we want, just like you said, everybody in the room, and the room just got bigger, to know that Dickinson County is open for business and we're going to win. We will win, and our drive is still driving. And if you want to send a check, we've still no. got room for their There money. you go. <laughs> Boy, that isn't a good way to end we, the we have very many. We have a lot of individuals and a lot of companies, and we've set up a fund at the Community Foundation of Dickinson County for those individuals who would like to support it and be able to take a tax deduction. For those companies uh, who invest, they can take a direct deduction through their own company. You know the phone number at your office down there? 263-1562. 1562. Okay, we'll make sure Dave puts that on a little scroll down here at the bottom and you can find Doug Smart by looking almost anywhere. <laughs> and uh, 
I'm right here behind the camera every day uh, somewhere. So you find me, uh, you have a question, we have lots of resources you can talk to. Somebody in your industry, somebody in your neighborhood, somebody who's written a check, and somebody who's thinking about it. So this is the time. If you want in the game for Dickinson County, today's the day. We'd love to hear from them. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks guys for coming. What a terrific you, pleasure to have thank you. Thank you. What a terrific uh, pleasure to be part of your effort. I'm Dennis Suisse. I work for Equal Communications. These fellows are working for all of us. Doug and Doug, Doug Smart, Doug Kinsinger. Economic development in Dickinson County is alive and well. Have a great day.